just one man. <laughs> um, so I feel like the secret, not so secret theme, uh, can you all hear me? Yeah! Of tonight's reading is not death, but love. It's deep literary insight. Um, so can I, I don't, you all, I can't see any of your faces, but from before you look like beautiful, attractive, willing people. And so I thought that maybe I would ask for maybe a tiny bit of audience particip participation for yeah. this first poem. Is that, can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually not uh, extroverted audience participation, but introverted. Um, I'm going to ask you to do a little uh, experiment with me, which is to um, just follow the following instructions, which is first, um, I just want to ask you all to close your eyes, your own eyes, <laughs> not other people's eyes, your own eyes. Okay. Um, and then the second thing is just next to imagine the skin of someone you desire. Just think about it and think about what it would be like to reach out and put your fingers lightly against that skin. Okay. Now just hold on to that feeling while I read this poem to you. Okay. The poem is called Sweet Jesus. <laughs> tea, tea, butter, the structure. We were discussing the death of iambic pentameter, though we didn't know it. She said, with the notch above her lips, I have a perfect ass. And I thought, the thing about asses is, they're not perfect. They have a kind of fatal flaw. <laughs> but I wasn't going to argue with, with such a proud collection of stumbling convergences. I wanted to say, can I stick my eyes down your throat? But what emerged was, those eyebrows, are they for rent? How are they tragic? By announcing a mountainlessness that aches for its climbers, a brow that needs no announcing, lips that shift as mapped by insomnia, one hidden rippling bone that can never. A patio floated by. About us, a Cambridge was revolving. Somewhere marriage was discussing a couple flattened by the new gravity of summer, but it wasn't us. We were refusing to cross that most glorious breed of slowness. I vow I will touch you, always more distant stranger. You can, you can keep your eyes closed if you want. <laughs> this next poem is a poem called There is a Light, which is a title stolen from my friend Morrissey, um, but, uh, and it's, it's about just basically standing on a balcony and smoking a cigarette and looking at an all-night all bodega. Deep. <laughs> okay, uh, there is a light. <clears throat> there is a light. Whenever behind your windows I look from my balcony down at you, you are open. At any hour, among the pyramids of eggplant and whiskey, Albanian shadows drag their shadows. I could watch this shadow clock for hours and do. It is timing me. And each time your doors part, my lips hydraulical, silently clatter. Oh, solemn, untamed, maternal Albanian market. Why at this fuck time of night are you open? <laughs> Locked within yourself and asking the same thing of me. Small leaning over the balcony figure watching your painless hydraulic scar from both sides open, releasing silence. In silence, you have been here forever since 1993. You assure me with your calm, ancient terror. You force a man who looks on you to doubt his sleep and lack of sleep. Oh, most magnificent pregnant man. You give birth to things surrounded with chocolate and things with chocolate buried inside them. You give birth to pine-scented dishwashing fluids. You give birth to placenta, which some people eat. You give birth to etc. as every pleasure in every hour. Oh, low market, wearing the naked dress of windows lettered with emerald translucent letters. 
What pale green inside me memory dress now gives birth to the story of you, giving birth to the story of me, giving birth to my awe of you at 3 a.m., giving birth to a mother of her sleeping children young and free who with pale green Arabic music leaking from one of her earrings looks up with her gaze and unlocks me then turns into her drifting toward the opposite and therefore holy direction. That was all one sentence, motherfuckers. <laughs> last, uh, last poem tonight um, is called Pocket. <laughs> I don't know what that person said, but it turned me on. Okay, uh, Pocket. Pocket. I like the word pocket. It sounds a little safely dangerous, like knowing you once bought a headlamp in case the lights go out in a catastrophe. You will put it on your head and your hands will still be free. Or standing in a forest and staring at a picture in a plant book while eating scary looking wildflowers. Saying pocket makes me feel potentially but not yet busy. I'm getting ready to have important thoughts. I'm thinking about my pocket, which has its own particular geology. Maybe you know what I mean. I mean, I basically know what's in there and can even list the items, but also there are other bits and pieces made of stuff that might not even have a name. Only a scientist could figure it out. And why would a scientist do that? He or she should be curing brain diseases or making sure that asteroid doesn't hit us. Look out, scientists. Today, the unemployment rate is 9.4%. I have no idea what that means. I tried to think about it harder for a while. Wow, really? Then tried standing in an actual stance of mystery and not knowing towards the world, which is my job as is staring at the backyard and for one second believing I'm actually rising away from myself, which is maybe what I have in common right now with you. And now I'm placing my hand on this very dusty table and brushing away the dust. And now I'm looking away and thinking for the last time about my pocket. But this time I'm thinking about its darkness, like the bottom of the sea. But without the blind fluorescent creatures floating in a circle around the black box, which along with tremendous thunder and huge shards of metal from the airplane, sank down and settled here where it rests, cheerfully beeping. Thank you.